can I can contribute as well. Thank yeah. You. So um, this is the uh, one of the round tables that I try to do every few months with the Nordic walking groups on Facebook. And uh, the, the idea is uh, to, to, to share knowledge, give offer advice, give tips, and it's dependent on, on how many of our, uh, uh, how many beginners we have versus instructors and experienced Nordic walkers. So that, that'll probably influence the direction of, of uh, discussion. And we'll, we try to, we'll try to keep it to 30 minutes uh, so that people can get on with their, you know, with the rest of their day. Um, but uh, glad you joined, Rachel. And uh, um, since you're an instructor and I'm an instructor, this may be a, a benefit to, to the other instructors when I post it uh, as we talk about things. And they may, and, and I hope they chime in with, uh, with their own ideas as well and, and share some things. But, but your question was uh, having to do with uh, what, uh, adding variety to the training. Yes. Um, there's, you know, there's instruction in, in walking technique, of course. Right. But, uh, for example, a weekly group that I host, um, we intersperse the walking technique, um, with, uh, band, theraband work. Right. Um, using the poles for, um, sort of adjunct exercises. Right. How to use them for stretching, for isometrics all kinds of um, different ways to use the poles as a, almost as an accessory. Right. Um, but uh, I'm always looking for ideas from other instructors on how to um, vary those activities over the course of, you know, months. Right. Um, just to keep things interesting, you know, for my clients. Yeah. Well, I know a couple of things that I've done to to vary it up. Are, uh, I had one of the Nordic walkers come and give us a demo of of how she walks with her dog. She Nordic walks, and uh, she uh, she she showed how she uh, sets up the leash system. It's basically a waistband, and and a slightly longer than normal leash, and so she's able to get out and use both poles and and move along and and nordic walk and uh, she, that's a well-behaved dog <laughs> she the minute, she really the minute they them. go sideways sniffing something that's it yeah well it was yeah. in, it's interesting because uh sometime before one one of the people came out to nordic walk and she didn't have that kind of a setup but she had this a really long rope leash so she still wanted to Nordic walk. So she tied it around her waist, and uh, her dog was was pretty uh, was was pretty well behaved, and she moved along. Um, another person brought their dog, and uh, she was holding it with the leash, and uh, so I suggested that she that she use both gloves on her hands, but just go with one pole, and and then alternate arms. Mm. Uh, and hold the leash with one and pull with the other one and then and then alternate that and so she seemed to like that as well um so the, the, that was uh that was one of the things that uh, added a little variety uh, to that does that spark any other ideas um it's interesting um I did try with my dog on a few occasions with a, basically a waist mm -hmm. leash. Um, didn't work so well, but that's our dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it worked while it worked. I mean, it would be great to have, you know, Nordic walking with dogs uh, as an option. And people love to bring their dogs along outside and it would, you know, could attract yeah. more people who otherwise wouldn't pay attention to just using poles. Right. Um, definitely needed the right dog. Um, now there's, there's yeah. one instructor that I've seen who, who uh, uh, she, I, I think she and her group, they'll strap yoga mats to their backs and they'll, and they'll walk out to a spot, lay the yoga mats out and, and do some yoga. 
mm-hmm. then and then they'll you know roll up the mats put them on their backs again and walk back uh, to to their cars oh that sounds good um, that, that was something else and and maybe if you're not a, a yoga instructor maybe one of your one of your members is a yoga instructor and they could come out and you know walk with you and mm-hmm. do that so that's uh that, that's what i saw one person doing you know i'm thinking it could be more of a like an urban nordic walking and go from where i live go from taco truck to taco truck you know spend a, a good a good afternoon doing it yeah or or you know like a pub crawl but with nordic walking right well it's it's interesting you say that because among runners there's a group called hash house harriers mm-hmm. have you heard of them oh yes and uh uh what uh, what have you heard about it um i know that they use uh flour wheat flour right to to mark their their paths and they run from place to place and they follow the wheat flower markers and yeah i'm the, afraid i don't know that m- much more detail beyond that yeah they they uh what i was told was that they have a couple of couple of runners go out ahead and and then they mark the trail and then the other people run along and and the idea is that they they always they always end up at a pub yeah and uh um so so some some version of that uh, I, I've often thought about how I would implement that in 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 Nordic walking. Not that not that you could do it in Nordic walking, but um, are the venues that I would use like the parks and all that would uh, would they frown at at me putting putting flour and sawdust down to to mark the path? Um, they they, they shouldn't. They would, but yeah, I don't see why yeah. they would because it'll wash away but um anyway that was uh something to to think about hmm. um they made hmm. some good photos to to share out you know excuse me just a second leroy i'm i'm going to block off the video and go get a notepad okay oh, actually no wait it's right here with my my book my nordic walking notebook where I keep track of attendance and payments. Yeah, I um I started looking at running websites and running magazines for for ideas because I I, I just assume that uh, that they might have similar uh, issues about you know trying to keep things interesting and and all that. Uh, so so I've been uh, been looking looking at that. That's a good idea. Um, hmm. Does that bring any other things to mind? I'm just thinking about the tacos. Uh, for 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 people who will be viewing this recorded session later, uh, I am based in Houston, Houston, Texas, USA. We are flat much of the year. We are hot to warm. Um, we have parks. They are not always contiguous, but more and more are. Yeah. We have uh, uh, a Bayou Greenway system of trails connecting, uh, running alongside the bayous that run through our city, right. connecting city parks. Uh, we are not a very pedestrian friendly city. Uh, so everybody walks in the street, whether they're rich or poor. Yeah. They don't always have yeah. sidewalks, but it's getting better. And we are famous for our food, our restaurants uh including lots of food trucks taco trucks pop-up trucks yeah so this idea of having a like a sequence a nordic walking sequence of a few hours going from one eating place to another i think would work would be very appealing in in my market right yeah let's see here well have you heard of an online application called Chat GPT. Yes. Well, um, it's uh, for for those uh, watching this video who haven't heard of it. It's an artificial intelligence application, and it will pretty much do anything you want. So, 
So I added, uh, so I, I just asked it a question or gave it a request. I said, provide a list of ideas to add fun variety to Nordic walking sessions. And it gave me, it, within about two seconds, it gave me 12 ideas. And, and so chat GPT might be a tool for, for uh, you know, gen generating ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so let me just run through them real quick. Nature scavenger hunt. So you create a list of items for participants to find. Uh, interval training. Mm -hmm. So mix up your pace during the walk. Um, one popular method for that is to is to put the people in single file and, and they walk along and the person at the back walks real fast to the front. And then the new person in the back then walks real fast to the front. And, and so that uh, that increases the intensity, but it's it's a fun way to do that. Um, I, mean, I, I have a challenge in that um, my regular Saturday group, we have some people who can go quickly or maintain a moderate speed consistently and uh, others who are um, not capable of that. Right. They have injury or um, getting on in years. So I'm constantly running back and forth, uh, trying to keep some semblance of the group. And some of them take turns staying with the slower ones. Yeah. But it, it, that's a frustration. You know, how, how does one manage that? Yeah. But but well, back to your chat GPT ideas. Uh, well, the, that's a the great idea. That, uh, the interval technique that I just heard about that I might try myself first is called uh, 30 20 10. And uh, it's, uh, I, I saw it on a running website, and you could, I don't see why you couldn't do it in Nordic walking. But you, you go at a moderate pace for 30 seconds, and then you increase it for 20 seconds, and then you go hard for 10 seconds. And then you back off and you maybe do do that cycle a couple of times. So that that would be that, that might be another way to do intervals. Um, this one, this one says put a put together a music playlist to accompany the walk. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how you make sure that everybody can hear the music. Uh, since, since you're probably would probably be in a public park and it would be a noise nuisance, but uh, I think there are some instructors who who actually have uh, you know earphone headsets and, uh, and microphones and all that and they can communicate that mm -hmm. to uh, to everyone that way. Um, themed walks. Choose a theme for your walk, such as a historical tour, a color-themed walk. In other words, find all green items or cultural exploration. Learn interesting facts about your surroundings and share them with the group. I actually did that maybe about a year ago. Uh, it was, I think it was Memorial Day weekend. It was a Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. And I actually had about six or seven people turn out for it. I thought everyone would be out of town. But what we did, uh, where I live uh, in Alabama, we met at Veterans Memorial Park, and it's a it's a small park, and and it has different pieces of military equipment, you know, planes, tanks, jeeps, uh, around. And uh, with my military background, what I did was uh, we, since it was a small park, we would do a lap and stop at one of the displays and then I talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then we do another lap and stop at the next display and I'd talk about it and, and so on. And uh, that uh, there, there might be a way you can do that in, in, other, in other things. For example, if you're at a botanical garden, maybe you can work out an arrangement with a docent to, or, or several of them where you people are walking along and you come to a station and stop and somebody explains the plants there, um, things like that. In my market, there's someone doing that uh, with just plain walking. Mm -hmm. 
she's she's been building her business for a long time. She's my mm -hmm. model. Um, and um, she has obtained uh, grants from the city to take walking groups to different parts of the city and explore yeah. the um, distinctive art and architecture and history there. Um, she, you know, it's not an exercise walk. It's just wellness and yeah. connection and being outdoors with other people. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, in so, but there's no reason, you know, Nordic Nordic walking cannot do that as yeah. well. Well, along those lines, uh, there's a national organization or a movement or whatever you want to call it. It's called Walk with a Doc. Mm -hmm. And have you heard of that one? Yes. Because uh, there, there are some, there are a couple of sessions or events in Birmingham where, where they, uh, you, you know, a doctor goes out and and they invite you to walk along and you can, you can talk doctor talk and, you know, ask questions and all those things about health and, uh, um, you know, maybe there's a doctor that would be amenable to to joining you on a walk and, you know, let your Nordic walkers uh, ask questions, and it would be an opportunity to expose the doctor to Nordic walking, and maybe right. that per that one will refer people to the, you know, to your uh, sessions. Here's an idea. Um, I worked for recently for a, a number of weeks with a private client who was also um, receiving treatment from a physical therapist. Right. And the client brought the physical therapist to the client's location and had me come at the same wow. time. Physical therapist had never heard of Nordic walking. And the therapist was uh, making video of my client uh, doing his Nordic walking and how it changed his his uh, posture for the better. Right. Um, so perhaps we could also uh, reach out to physical therapists yeah. as a profession and offer to take some on some walks. Yeah. She, um, she, was, she was very impressed by um, how much Nordic walking helped her client. Well, and and she, the, the therapist and I were, were working together, you know, from our, our respective areas of expertise and knowledge. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, that's encouraging to hear. You know, you should uh, with it within the bounds of HIPAA and privacy and all that. You should you should share that with uh, with the group because uh, they they might take that to their doctors and physical therapists and say you you need to check this out. Um, another idea is walking games. Introduce games like I Spy or Twenty Questions during the walk. This can engage participants mentally while enjoying the physical activity. So, um, so that's a there. That might be a, an interesting way to do it as well, because mm -hmm. uh, one of the hot uh, topics for for older people is neuroplasticity, and uh, uh, so that that could be a way to to introduce that. Um, Photography walk. Bring a camera or use your smartphone to capture interesting sights along the way and uh, encourage participants so to take photos of nature, architecture, anything that catches their eye. So, so that, I mean, that might tie into the other ones. For example, a themed walk where you tell them, take photos of, of uh, park benches as you go along the way or, or, or particular kinds of trees, et cetera. We, we we did that actually this past season um as the springtime trees began to to bloom in their in the order that they bloom in where right. we live um I encouraged uh, my walkers to basically play I spy yeah who's yeah. the first one to see you know this tree leafing out or this bulbs pl bulb plant starting to emerge yeah good um and we you know, when you stop and take a picture, it can kind of interfere with the rhythm of the the exercise. Right. But it's a pleasant thing to do. 
and it engages us with the natural world, which is part of the appeal of Nordic walking. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see, yoga stops. There you go. Mm -hmm. We uh, we mentioned that too. Team Nordic walking. Divide participants into teams and create friendly competitions or relay races during the walk. This adds a socially competitive element to the session. I guess that would depend on uh, how competitive people will get. <laughs> and how many you have to make it, yeah. make yeah. enough people to make a team. But that, that's right. cute. Sunrise or sunset walks. Schedule the walks during sunrise or sunset for beautiful natural backdrop. So that's that's interesting there. Um, and in our extreme climate, it would also it also makes sense in 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 the hot months. Yeah. Um, I tell people try to walk when the sun is below the tree line, morning or right. evening. Right. Uh, socialize. Use the walking time as opportunity for socializing. So. Plan themed walks followed by a social gathering, such as picnic or coffee, to build a sense of community. Uh, one of my paths or routes that I use, it uh, where it starts, it starts and ends uh, near this coffee uh, place. So, so there's always the opportunity to to adjourn to the coffee place and get a and, and get a pastry and uh, and a beverage before we break up and head home. Um, trail exploration choose different trails for your Nordic walks to keep things interesting explore new areas parks or nature preserves um, so that's that, that's something also uh, I, I would guess you want to make sure that people are aware that if you're on a trail there, there might be a little bit you might need to be a little more aware of tripping hazards and the like but Trails are a lot of fun. And uh, I over where I live, there's this park that that's really that's really good. It's a large park and uh, it does have trail through woods that are that are a lot of fun to to walk. Um, fitness stations. Along your walking route, incorporate fitness stations for body weight exercises like lunges, squats, or push-ups. Um, this adds strength training to your routine. And uh, I think there are parks around in in communities that have actual equipment, mm -hmm. like uh, like uh, you know bars for doing push-ups, and um, I've I've seen I've seen actual rowing stations where you 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 sit there and you're rowing your body weight, uh, things things like that. There is a national. Um entity called FitLot mm -hmm. that um, offers turnkey installation of outdoor accessible fitness stations with that yeah. kind of equipment where one can use one's own body weight to do things. Uh, the, the equipment right. isn't just static, it moves. Um, and um, it's social also. Yeah. Like some of them are set up for two people to use at the same time, four people. Right. Yeah. Um, looking at it on, on the internet. Yeah. Right and they got endorsement by AARP and very smart marketing. Uh, a group I'm involved with here in my city uh, is in discussion with FitLot. Um, you know, for like a quarter million dollars, which is very, very accessible from large corporate donations yeah um and a piece of land they can just come turnkey and install one of these i've seen similar uh parks right in another country where some family members live and seen people just walk up to it on their walks going about their business it's set into the urban fabric or on the beachfront yeah and people just walk up and do some exercise while they're talking to each other a little cross-country skiing pull downs yeah. And then just continue on their way. Uh, so as more municipalities in in North America get these, um, yes, absolutely, those would be um, really attractive to incorporate in a Nordic walk. And and that's where 
uh, you you can turn it into a circuit mm -hmm. where where if you have multiple stations or multiple stops, you can do a quick lap, do something, and then do another lap and do something. Yeah. Okay, good. So fitlot. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Fitlot, I think dot org or dot com. Yeah, it's it's a dot org. It's a dot org. When, when I look at it, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, North American. Um, I, I don't know if they work in Canada yet, but definitely in the U.S. Um, yeah. For Nordic walking instructors or practitioners who are interested in promoting, you know, greater right. accessibility in the community to fitness and wellness, uh, this could be something folks could bring to their cities and and um, and regions. Yeah. You know, if the yeah. ingredients are there. Right. So. It could also question. be a way to to uh, uh, meet other uh, people or market groups or take them to yeah parts of one's city where these fitness stations are compared to where right. they aren't. Yeah, right. So, in terms of doing Nordic walking plus some additional exercises. Uh, I ask the question, make a list of exercises that can be used while Nordic walking. And chat GPT gave me a list, lunges, side lunges, squats, calf raises, leg lifts, heel kicks, arm exercises, um, ab twists, marching with knee lifts, walking lunges, pole plank. So, uh, um, you can so anyway, yeah. Your your imagination is is the limit here. That that would be uh, so. I think Chat GPT is uh, is actually a pretty good you know resource for like creating it. ideas. And I did one. I put another list in there that said or another request, make a list of standing yoga exercises that can be used while Nordic walking. <laughs> and in two specific. seconds, two seconds, wow. gave me do the mountain pose, tree pose, warrior one, warrior two, a chair pose, forward fold, extended triangle pose, eagle pose, um, dancer's pose, standing forward bend with shoulder opener, half moon pose, standing leg raise. So those are all the standing poses. And, and of course, a nice thing with the poles is that the ones that de definitely require balance, you can mm -hmm. hold the poles down, get into position, and then lift the poles up and you work on your balance. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, it's chat GPT seems to be a really good resource for generating ideas Fantastic. on the fly. Right. That's that's pretty neat. It, it just gave me two seconds. It gave me uh, gave me a dozen yoga poses. Wow! And and it says it says you can incorporate these poses during breaks in Nordic walking session, or find a scenic spot to perform a short yoga routine, etc. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Just you just know. It, it, just, just don't do what uh, what I saw one Instagrammer do. We were out traveling and we were at the Grand Canyon, and uh, and I'm sitting standing there watching uh, behind the rail, and I saw these two people uh, climb over the rail and head out towards the towards the edge, and one of them put the yoga her yoga mats down and and got into yoga pose. The other one was taking photos, but. They were looking pretty close to the edge. And I, uh, okay, what? I don't know about that. Chat GPT, how can I win the Darwin Award this year? <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. So did a park park ranger find them? Um, they the uh, no, they uh, nobody caught them. So 
but it was but it, I, I did I did notice uh, a family Nordic walking uh, while we were there. Ah, oh, nice. They were going along one of the paths. So that was pretty good. Um, so anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, so variety. And what, what I think I'll do is is copy and paste these into a document. And when I share out the the uh when, when I share out the uh um video, I'll just attach the document to it as well. And I think that'll that'll inspire a lot of people. Yeah. Should be helpful for, to the to other instructors as well. Mm -hmm. What uh, did, did this give you any other ideas or inspire any other ideas? Um, well, it it is um, endorsing some things I'm already doing. Yeah. Um, with the group, some of which I learned from you know my instructor originally, who who had this group. Um, we do work with uh, therabands. Right. Stretchy bands a lot. And um, also from my own experience um, in other forms of exercise or activity or even physical therapy, of course, you know, I'm not a physical therapist, but there's some things that one learns to do with the body that are pretty universal if you just bring attention to it. Yeah. So um, that adds value to our Nordic walking sessions, just right. you know, reminding people, um, engage your your abs uh, when you're just standing, you know, engage your your leg muscles. Think about them. Don't just stand there. You know, put them to work while we're yeah. doing upper body things. Right. Um, and that's that seems to be well received. Good. And again, it's all about, you know, what one way to look at Nordic walking. It's all about uh, adding value to your time when you're out walking yeah um for for exercise and and health um you know some people are are more oriented just toward being outside and being social and enjoying that and that's adding value to your time also right um some people respond very warmly to the idea of ROI right you get a better return on investment for your walking when you use poles or yeah. when your technique is better. Yeah. Or, you know, if you do this or think about that. And that's a, a real motivator for uh for some folks. Right. You know, it's about finding um what resonates with your walkers and knowing how to position it for you know th the greatest benefit for them. Right. And then that will keep, you know, your interest in your business going as well. Yeah. It'll spread the word. Yeah. And uh, at some point, uh, I've I've had a little bit of success doing Nordic walking retreats as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we uh, I, I invite some speakers and, and, and do some of those things and uh, people and also obviously teach Nordic walking during that and let people practice. Leroy, how do you um, advertise that, promote it to find enough people to to make it worthwhile? Well, I have a mailing list. And uh, and so uh, I, I send I send out to the mailing list. And then uh, right now I'm spending a little money on Facebook advertising for something like that. And and then I go around and uh, or we go around and, and solicit sponsorships mm -hmm. to to help defray the cost. Uh, I, ideally, we'll we'll find somebody who let us use a space for free. Uh, but but we definitely try to find sponsorships and have a registration fee to cover meals, snacks, and uh, and uh, you know uh, space rental. Mm -hmm. Are these like one day affairs? Yeah, uh, it, they they have been. Uh, I'm I'm working on one now for that'll go Friday evening and then into Saturday. You can see see how that's going to go. I'm I'm trying to figure out what will 
what will uh, be, uh, you know, work best for for bringing people in on Friday and then having them stay through Saturday because a lot of times uh, people might sign up for something, but on that last day and those last hours, they're gone. They don't stick around. Uh. It's just a, a phenomenon of the conferences and uh, trade shows and that sort of thing. Right. Yeah, the, the last half day or whatever. Yeah. We're depending on the scale of the event. Right. If people are, are tired. Yeah. I wish you all good luck in that. That's that would be great to have have yeah. enough people to to have a thriving retreat. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking do something on Friday with a dinner, mm -hmm. and then do something on uh, and then Saturday we'll uh, do some do some uh, do more walking. Do you have those like at a, a campsite or a, a, a retreat center, or is it more um, people go home and sleep and then they come back the next day? Yeah, yeah. People, we uh, I've used our parks and rec buildings, and um, yeah, but people would be local and and then they just go home mm -hmm. uh, after the sessions. But uh, it 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 facilitate it's. Uh, people who uh, who might come in from out of town, they they would just stay at a hotel or stay with a friend. Mm -hmm. So, what are some um, typical questions you get from people who are new to the practice or are asking about it for the first time? Well, in in the responses to the announcement that I that I put up in, in the group, mm -hmm. I had uh, the questions were generally around the grip and, and releasing the poles. Uh, the, these are people who use the glove poles and they're talking about really, you know, they're they're constantly holding on to the poles and, and and they're trying to figure out how to release. So, so they're and uh, so they're they they find that they're that they keep holding the poles throughout the arm swing and, and they want to be able to to release so they can get a bigger arm swing. So, uh, lat at uh, in the last one we, we talked a little bit about it different different things uh, for for physical cues. Uh, so, for example, uh, in, in my experience, the double polling technique seemed to be a good way to teach that bigger arm swing because mm -hmm. there's there's something about double polling that makes it easier to really let those arms fly back and uh, and to release the poles. And uh, and and also it, uh, it it helps reinforce the physical cue where when, when those arms are going back, you can feel a bit of a stretch in your chest and it just reinforces that physical cue so they can be sensitive to it when they're walk, uh, you know, doing diagonal walking. I've found that uh, double polling <clears throat> also works well with some of my clients who have some physical limitations, right? Um, maybe some incipient frailty uh, or some who just aren't very well coordinated physically. That's not where their, their strengths lie Yeah, in, in physical awareness and coordination. Um, the double polling is easier because, and a lot, some, sometimes they're overthinking, just trying to walk, right? you know, so if we do just double polling, it 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 release it it frees them from that overthinking opportunity. Yeah, and um, and it seems to give uh, added confidence to one walker I have, who is up in years, 
and whose body is beginning to become frail. Right. Uh, the mind is completely there. And the strength and the intention, you know, are are there. But the body is not what it used to be. Right. So the double polling adds stability and confidence. Right. And yeah. yes, a, a full range of use of the body. Yeah. And it also uh, inhibits them from doing what I call the teacup uh, act, which is, um, my poles are over there, uh, holding the pole and then kind of tipping it forward on the on the front swing, oh, kind uh -huh. of swinging it forward with the with the pinky finger and the ring finger, choop, and it ends up being in front of the body. Right. And it's fun to swing that, but I tell them you're not at a tea party. Right. <laughs> no. Um, the double polling keeps that from happening, so they get yeah. a good, solid, and and more safely stably balanced stride. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, those were that that was the predominant question. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I suspect that'll be a common question all the time well, in another couple of months when we do another round table. Right. Oops. Sorry. Turn this off. So um, the. Uh, the I the, the physical cues from double polling seem to help pretty nicely. <clears throat> one uh, one other aspect uh, of physical cues that that I put into my teaching as well is. Uh, to to get that arm to get the the arm far enough back in the backswing to make the most of your back muscles is uh, uh, I uh, I tell people don't let your if uh, don't let your hands stop where it's in line with your pants uh, you, with the seam of your pants you want to go farther back and 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 the way you can make sure you're going far enough back is if you if you stick your thumb out. You, you should be able. Uh, you'll be able to touch the back of your leg, but um, you, you want to have that that space, and that that usually uh, usually helps people uh, visualize it. Yeah, get get the arm past the the body midline. Right. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And yeah, anything else come to mind about variety? No, you, this has been a, a very valuable session, Leroy. Good, good. I'm glad you came on. Yeah. Is this uh, this uh, this allowed me to to generate some of these ideas, and I'll probably start using them. It's it's, it's just genius to go to Chat GPT. It's uh, it, I've found it pretty useful. Yeah. And uh, I don't use it for actual fact finding. Where I'm research because uh, I think there are some issues with it, but in terms of just generating a list of things and uh, stuff like that, I I found it pretty helpful. Great. Good. All right. Well, thank you, and I hope uh, people who view this uh, in its recorded form will derive benefit as well. Good. Yeah. And uh, I, I will work on this a little bit, clean it up a bit, and uh, I'll share it out on the group for people to, to see. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining. You're a great resource, Leroy. Thank you for hosting. Glad to do it.